Uh, well, hello friends. Welcome back to Tempest Sweats his off TV. So unfortunately, I've seen people making quite a few mistakes when planning their trip on coming to Thailand today. I've got six of the ones that I feel like are the most common. And if you don't do these, it's probably gonna make your life a whole lot easier. Jesus Christ, hit the B-roll. Don't get me wrong, I am no expert at moving to Thailand. I was guilty of pretty much all of these things. I did a couple of them, luckily, but especially number five and number six, I definitely could have done a little bit better. But the biggest mistake that I for sure see is just a general lack of research. So now, a lot of places, if you're traveling, it might not be that different from your home, but if you're coming from the West, Thailand's gonna be quite a bit different. So there is a little bit of research you can do. So you're just kind of more comfortable when you get here. You don't gotta worry about getting in any weird situations, having somebody yell at you, somebody trying to punch you in the face. Even though that is not very common, it is possible if you do a couple things that Thai people are not really crazy about, especially if you do it as a foreigner. So general, just lack of research. And we're gonna touch on a few things that you should research so you know what's up as soon as you get here. That way you're not the annoying foreigner that everybody wants to fight or throw coconuts at. Now a major one that I do see quite a bit and it is for sure one that can definitely ruin your trip is kind of just underestimating the true cost of living. Now yes, if you're coming from the West, Thailand is gonna be quite a bit cheaper to live. Your money's gonna go a lot farther, especially if you're still making a Western income, but that doesn't mean that you can come here and just spend money whimsadaisically. That, that's a word. Yeah, whimsadaisically. I like that. That's actually a pretty good word. But that doesn't mean you can just come here and spend and do whatever you want and not have to worry about it, especially if you're on a smaller budget. Now I do have some videos talking about my budget and what I feel like it costs to actually live here. Can you live here on a thousand dollars a month? Yes, absolutely, but it does take effort. It does take planning. You can't just come here and do whatever you want and eat whatever you want and drink as many beers as you want and go to the club and live on a thousand dollars a month. So obviously if you get here and you run out of money, that will put a major hindrance on your trip. So underestimating the true cost of living or what it takes to actually budget down to all those videos you see where, oh, you can live here on a thousand dollars a month and live like a king. I don't think that's necessarily true. You can be relatively comfortable on $1,000 a month, but you can't just come here and do whatever you want, whenever you want. I see a lot of guys come here and they're like, oh, well, I plan to you know, spend 800 to 1,000 a month, and in my first month, I spent 3,000. $1,000 a month here is possible, but do a real budget. Be really honest with yourself about what you're trying to do when it comes to eating, partying, all that stuff, and then you'll actually be set up for success and not blowing through your money. one of the biggest mistakes I feel like you can make if you're planning on coming to Thailand, especially if it's long term, is not going through the proper channels with immigration and your visas. Now in the past, it was a little bit more doable to do the whole visa run deal, come in for 30 days, extend, fly out for a couple weeks and come back. And now that's not to say this isn't still possible. At the end of the day, it's really up to the immigration official when you're coming back through the airport if they feel like you've been abusing the system or not. Now, I have firsthand seen people, especially in the past few months, that they seem to be cracking down on this quite a bit. I've ran into people personally, especially coming back from Malaysia, it seems like, that they're getting turned around and they're getting sent back to where they came from. They're being told they're not allowed back in, but not for how long, so it's kind of like this big deal and just imagine if you were here, all your stuff's here, you go to do a visa run, you're paying for a condo here or whatever, and then you gotta fly back to another country for who knows how long. God forbid you try to come back in again and they're like, nope, you're still not good. So I think going through the wrong channels and not getting a proper visa, especially if you're trying to stay here long term, is a huge mistake. If you're only coming for a month or two, don't really have to worry about it. But if you're planning on staying any longer than that, go ahead and get it in your budget to have a long-term visa, education, or maybe you can get a work permit or whatever. It's not that expensive really, especially if you factor in what visa runs and extensions are gonna cost you for a year. 
The only thing is, is you're gonna need more of that money up front, but then you don't have the headache and the possibility of not being let back into Thailand. Side note, Tempest TV just passed 1.5 million views all time, which is honestly pretty crazy to think about. Thank you guys so much for that. But I really wonder, like instead of cost per milli, like instead of how much I'm getting paid per 1,000 views, I really wonder how many ounces of sweat I'm dumping per 1,000 views. What the hell are we talking about? I think the heat stroke's setting in. Another one that I do feel like is a bit of a mistake, and we touched on it a little bit in a recent video, is failure to learn any Thai. You can get here and you can survive, especially if you're in Bangkok, Pattaya, Phuket, whatever, all the major like hotspots, and you can survive and be fine without learning any Thai, especially with Google Translate and everything, especially if you have one of those Time Kettle translators, go ahead and check them out. And yes, you can totally get by without it, but at the same time, like we discussed in the recent video, I think Thais really appreciate it when you make some sort of an effort and Sometimes even with Google Translate, the translations can be a little bit weird. I've definitely noticed it with like food. Sometimes ordering food can be a little bit difficult even with the translator. So if you know all your proteins, how to say spicy or not spicy in Thai, that's just gonna make your life a whole lot easier, especially if you're somewhat of a picky eater. But I think they also just appreciate it a lot if you've made some sort of an effort to learn their language. Just like I'm sure you would really appreciate it if somebody had moved to your country and made somewhat of an effort to pick up the language so there wasn't always that barrier pretty much everywhere you go. Now a major one that I feel like you definitely should not lack on is doing some research and understanding the major cultural differences between Thailand and your home country. Now chances are, especially if you're coming from the West, you're not coming from a Buddhist country, so there is a whole bunch of things with that. There's certain things that you do or don't do in public. There's stuff to do with your feet. There's stuff to do with people's heads. There's a lot of things that are a lot different. And some of these things can be considered super disrespectful if you're not paying attention or you do any of them. It's not that somebody might like try to fight you or anything like that. They might, but generally people are just going to be made super uncomfortable. And I'm guessing that you don't want to go to a new place and have people feel uncomfortable around you, especially if you're living here. It's best to try to integrate as best as you can. So definitely make sure you go through and just research some of the major cultural differences. You can hop back in my catalog. I spent a whole video talking about things that are normal in Thailand and different in your home country and I touch on a few of the major hitting points in that or you can just feel free to Google it. I'm sure there's plenty of blogs and stuff that will explain it a little bit better. But make sure you definitely check on those because this is something that can make people really uncomfortable and I'm sure you don't want to do that. And the big one. Luckily, I haven't run into this personally, but I have seen plenty of guys that I know, plenty of girls that I know come here and it's something that they just kind of dive into. Luckily, I already got that experience out of the way in America. I already made that mistake, so it's not really something that's been on my radar, but that's rushing in to major financial or just life decisions in general. I know people that have come here and instead of looking around to rent a condo or doing the math and seeing what it's like, they go out and they buy a condo or they hop into a business with somebody that they probably shouldn't be in business with or it just ends up being unsuccessful unfortunately and now they're out of a lot of money. Or when it comes to relationships, I know guys that have come here and hopped into things honestly way too quickly and gotten with people that might have had ulterior motives or going down the line they might learn they just don't get along or not being safe and then all of a sudden you got a kid on the way. So. When you get here, especially if you're moving here, you're gonna be excited, everything's gonna be fun. So just make sure you're holding yourself to the standards that you would have in your home country. You're not committing to any major mistakes or anything that might cut your Thailand trip super short or might just change the dynamic of it in general because now you got a wife and a baby to worry about. If that's what you want, absolutely go for it. But I advise that you just think about it from every single angle to try to make sure that it's something that you really want to do and it's not something that you're just falling into. Now if you avoid or make sure you are getting these six things squared away before you get here, it's going to make your experience a whole lot better, you're going to be a whole lot more comfortable and ideally you're going to be able to stay in Thailand a lot longer and you're going to be able to be committed to your decision. If you guys do have any more questions about things that you might need to get squared away before you get here, feel free to drop them in the comments or shoot me an email that's linked below and as always, I hope you guys have a great day. We'll catch you in the next one.